Community Church. It's good to see a strong and mighty uh, group on a very rainy Sunday morning. And a warm welcome to those people who are probably wise to stay at home <laughs> and worship from the comforts of their living rooms or their pajamas. Um, but it's good to have rain in California. So this is wonderful. Um, we hope people will get home and just probably stay off the roads today would be wise. But it's good we can come and worship together. I was away for some continuing education last week. And a big thank you to Reverend Judy Davis who preached while I was away. Um, so we have a few announcements as we begin our service. They're printed on the back of your um, bulletin there. But also notice we don't have a uh, PowerPoint today because Kathy Sackmore and a group of, I believe, about eight or nine people are up at Zephyr Point doing some cleanup work, and hopefully they won't get too much snow. It could be an interesting time for them. But uh, So we have people kind of coming and going this week. But um, please note that for our hymns today, they're from the small blue hymnal, the more uh, the pamphlet, pamphlet, like small hymnal. Um, we'll be using those no need to stand. Um, next Sunday is Reformation Sunday, and we have a bagpiper coming to play, which will be really nice. So we hope that you'll be here for that. We celebrate our Reformed heritage. And then the following Sunday, uh, November 7th, is All Saints Day. Um, after worship, we're going to be making some uh, paper cranes, these cranes of remembrance. And in worship, we like to read the names of folks um, who've passed on, those saints in our lives, who are no longer with us. So if you have any names that you would like read in worship, please get those into the office uh, this week. That would be very helpful. I believe the event, the Lunch and Learn event, on November 10th is pretty well full. So we have a big crew. We're going to have lunch. We're going to make Advent wreaths as we already are making our way towards Advent, which is the end of November. Um, also mentioned that I've had one person respond, we'd love to get some liturgists who can help out with worship, maybe ushers. Uh, Jim is here every week doing our filming. If we could get hands with that, sound people, we want to have a, a deeper bench, so to speak, for volunteers. And Kathy Frank is always um, kind of working as an usher. So, if you're willing to help out, we'd love to, you know, pass your name on to me and I'll be in touch. So I think those are our announcements. So let me call us into worship with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Most loving and gracious God, it's a joy to hear the rain on the roof of your sanctuary. How we needed this rain and how it is now going into the earth to revitalize creation. We do pray for those who are on the roads, those who are up at Zephyr Point, people in any areas that may be in danger of flooding. Keep us safe. Keep us together. God, we're thankful that we can still gather here in this place with whatever comes our way each week. We are centered on you during this time, eager to hear your word, to hear beautiful music, so that we are ready for yet another week. So be with us now, may your spirit move, and all praise unto you. Amen. Amen. I invite everybody from where you're from, where you're sitting, to look around and share Christ's peace with one another. Give someone the sign of Christ's peace, knowing that we are God's forgiven and beloved children, and we have much to be thankful for. The peace of Christ be with you. Also with you. Let's join together in our first hymn, which is number 2084 in the little blue hymn.
They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see everything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away home to his village, saying, Do not even go into the village. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your word. It comes to us in so many unique ways, often in ways when uh, we need it most. So we pray as always that your spirit would move in this sanctuary and in our hearts to give us a word of nourishment and challenge this day. In Jesus' name, amen. So, those of you who showed up today didn't know that there is a pop quiz. <laughs> so, bear with me. We'll see if we can get through it. On a standard traffic light, is the green light on the top or the bottom? Bottom. On the bottom. In which hand is the Statue of Liberty's torch? The right. Do books have even numbered pages on the left or the right side? The left. How many love nuts are there on a standard car wheel? <laughs> Five. <laughs> Whose face is on the dime? Roosevelt. Roosevelt. How many sides are there on a standard pencil? Six, the sides, six sides. And on our American flag, is the top stripe red or white? Red. Nice, you did well. The point of the quiz is just that sometimes we see things regularly, almost many times a day, and yet we may not really notice the details. 
Jacques Lucerin was a Frenchman who was blinded as a boy, yet he went on to be a hero of the French resistance against the Nazis. In his, in his autobiography, And There Was Light, he speaks about relying on senses other than sight to determine what is real. The problem is seen in a regular way, Lucerin wrote, is that sight naturally prefers outer appearances. It sticks only to the surfaces of things. We let our eyes skim over trees and traffic and faces, too often mistaking sight for perception, which is easy to do because we take in so much with our eyes. Speed is another problem. Our eyes quickly glance at things and we don't properly attend to them. Fingers do not glide, as Lucerin points out. Today's text teaches us how our encounters with Jesus can give us clearer vision to truly perceive and understand. The truth is that many of us are more blind than we imagine, myself included. We have blind spots. We're blind to the opinions and experiences of others, insisting only on what we believe to be true. We feel we have it all figured out when we only see the slight, tiniest slice of the entire picture. We're blind to the Spirit of God. If something doesn't line up with our dogma and tradition, then surely it's faulty. We all have our shortcomings, and we tend to lose sight of the bigger picture. Often we come to worship, focusing on execution. Did things go perfectly? We focus on little mistakes, rather than opening ourselves up to the movement of the Spirit. We want worship and our faith to be clean and tidy, rather than allowing God to truly enter our lives and maybe even reshape us. We might ask ourselves, how did worship make us feel? Or how did it change us? At work, we also encounter people who can frustrate us. They don't do the job the way we think it should be done. Maybe they don't respond to emails or their desk is a mess. We get so nitpicky that we can't see the gifts that our co-workers do bring to the table. When we focus on the wrong stuff, all the detriments, we lose sight of God's glory that's all around us. We're blind to the ways that the kingdom of God is being built among us. As you probably know, Mark's gospel account is the shortest account in the Bible of the gospels. He uses words very shrewdly. Yet here we learn that the process of giving this blind man sight was more involved than just a simple touch from Jesus. He first put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him. The result was that the man had some vision, but it was still blurry. He could see people, but they looked like trees. So things were still unclear. He needed more focus. So Jesus laid his hands on him, looked intently, and the man's sight was restored. He's described as seeing everything clearly. It seems we may need multiple encounters with Jesus to see things clearly. On some occasions we do just get it, but probably more often than not we need further prayer, further study, further faithfulness to see with clarity. Despite our demands for immediate satisfaction, many things in life simply need time and effort. So how, as disciples, do we focus? How do we see Christ and understand all that he is teaching us? Well, this is where a very active faith life becomes critically important. Our church's primary goal, why we exist, is the formation of disciples. Most churches, including Bethany, usually focus on three important areas of discipleship, all equally important. One is fellowship. 
to connect and form meaningful and supportive relationships, to worship, to attend to our souls, to praise God, and to welcome God's word into our hearts each and every week. And the third is mission, to put our faith into action in good works of love and justice and mercy. Well, seasoned students are and we need all the pieces for a healthy faith life. All members and friends are invited into this process, the ongoing communal and individual work of focusing your life on Christ, of being a disciple. This text reminds us that our faith isn't like an exam to be passed, but rather a muscle to be developed. Our final destination, we trust, is with God and all the saints who've gone before us. But in the meantime, our journey is very important. Each day we either feed our relationship with God or we might drift away to something else. Each day is a new opportunity to seek out what God is calling us to do in the here and now. The joys and the challenges of life that we face offer an opportunity to seek out how God is present. There's never a moment when we'll finally declare, yes, now I get it, my faith is complete. As soon as we begin to box God in, God throws a curveball our way and we declare back to the drawing board. So may we stay on this journey of being lifelong disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's seek to involve ourselves in fellowship, mission, and worship so that our faith is well-rounded. Let's keep seeking God's presence in all the highs and lows of life at church, in our homes, in our communities. As a church family, let's encourage one another and not discourage one another. Let's be more gracious with one another rather than judgmental. May we seek out ways to make our faith and our community one that authentically explores the great mystery of faith in ways that are marked by love and grace and trust. And together might we have a clearer vision of what it means to be a child of God, a disciple of Jesus Christ, and a recipient of the gift of God's eternal grace. May it be so. Amen. So I'll just kind of sing it through, and if you want, join in.
I want to invite you all, if you have something to share, please let me know. I know that people may have heard that last Friday, not this past Friday, but the Friday before Agnes Smith passed away, have not heard anything yet about a memorial service, but we'll keep you posted. Um, again, we have the group up at Zephyr Point, um, which is wonderful. They're doing, um, well, they're doing a variety of jobs for the retreat center, but probably pretty hard to do work today, so we're thinking of them. All right, well, let's be in prayer together. Creating, sustaining, and renewing God, we praise you for creating a world filled with beauty and variety. There is so much to observe and to learn and to consider. We thank you for the many ways that you reveal yourself to us in worship, in the beauty of a flower, and in the power of a storm. As these long-awaited rains fall, so too may we be nourished in body and soul by your care and your word. We give you thanks this day for the evidence of your presence in the church and the local community. For all the joys of our personal lives, like reunions with family and friends, for celebrations and parties, for vacations and times of renewal. Our hearts are filled with gratitude for you, for creating us, for endowing us with a tremendous variety of gifts, and for our tasks as caretakers of this world and all it contains. We praise you for the gift of faith, which is our mighty anchor through this life. Renew us and increase our trust in you and in one another. Ease our fears and calm our daily stresses. Encourage us to take more risks in your name. Empower us to become greater image bearers of you as evidence in our care for creation and one another. Give us focus to keep striving to understand you and to be stronger disciples of Jesus Christ. Bless all those efforts towards peace and reconciliation in our world. We pray for leaders in the church and in government that they may be focused on mercy, love, and equality. We pray for the ministry of Bethany that we would continue to have strong visions and trust for ways to keep doing ministry in this community. God, in our love and care for persons who have particular needs this day, we especially lift up to you the work crew at Zephyr Point. Keep them safe as they do their good works. We think of the family of Agnes Smith who mourned her loss We think of all those people we name now silently to you who are in need of prayer and care. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior and teacher, who taught all of his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we think about a community like ours, there's some that are big, there are some churches that are small, but we come as we are and we bring the gifts that we have. And it's our work as a church to find ways to use those gifts, to have our own unique identity. Not trying to be another church, but this unique community with our own set of unique gifts. So it's in that spirit that I ask you to reflect about your gifts that you bring here. Of time, talent, and treasure. And that you find ways to share them. 
It's in that spirit that we have two offering plates and we'll receive the morning's offering. We thank you for the gifts.
Keep focusing on Jesus Christ. Keep working on all of those growing edges in our faith life um, where we can get a better glimpse of the bigger picture of what Jesus is calling of us. And know that in this process, the Spirit will be with you as will all of us. And know that all roads lead to Jesus Christ. Right, let's go. There's coffee hour. All are invited. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and ever after. Hallelujah. Amen.